Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Warframe Unabridged. Today we are taking a final look at Nyx before we move on to the next series. With Nyx we are taking a look at her Assimilate build and this is a build that's taking into account all of the strengths and weaknesses that you have when it comes to Assimilate. Now there's not a whole lot that you can do to really build up the power beyond using duration and uh, efficiency. Um, power strength does affect it a little bit so we're gonna swap this out and we are going to replace overextended well, with just a basic intensify because we are not all that worried about range when it comes to this power. You aren't trying to uh, affect people with the pulse because you're trying to keep the pulse active and we're kinda going into terminator mode here might even be a good way to run a solid melee build with Nyx. And um, so for starters, we're going with maximum duration. Because duration is uh, just imperative. Duration and efficiency decide how fast you burn through your energy while this is active. Now we're equipping flow to supplement that. Endurance drift as well. And that's going to put us at 623 energy. And that's nothing to sneeze at. Now keep in mind, the main power in this build is a toggleable ability. So powers like, or I'm sorry, uh, mods like Energy Siphon and Focus Trees like Xeneric aren't going to really help out. So we are going to go with Naramon on this build because it does heavily rely on mechanics like uh, melee. And we're going to go with Corrosive Projection because you can't really benefit from energy over time. So uh, we're just going to mod for the enemy faction that you're facing off against. Um, now for the Corpus, you would want to go with like Shield Disruption maybe. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go with uh, Corrosive Projection. Um, because that's going to really help out for the majority of the enemies you're actually going to wind up facing. Endurance Drift is going to help your... Uh, parkour take you a little bit further. You're not going to be doing much parkour with this build, but if you ever wind up getting struck by a nullifier, that's kind of going to be a problem. So you're going to want to work with that. Now, uh, we're going to be going with the Tonkor, uh, and it's not so much for the damage, so don't even worry about the damage. Focus more on the game mechanics of it. It's the uh, mobility aspect, the fact that it can boost you up. And we are going to equip a fast-moving projectile weapon, the Haiku Prime. And the reason why we're going for that is uh, in case you have a nullifier around, you want to be able to make sure that uh, if there's a bubble coming towards you, you have something that can bring it down. And this is really going to get that job done. Now the first weapon, uh, the first melee weapon that we're going to be taking a look at, and that's mostly what this uh, video is going to be consisting of, um, is melee weapons. Uh, we're starting out with the Orthos Prime. Now there's two different stances for this, both of which provide a little bit of mobility. The first one being Bleeding Willow, the second one being Shimmering Blight. Now Bleeding Willow is the more mobile of the two, I believe. And so we are going to just take a quick look at the melee combos. Drifting Steel, so R1, R1, and then hold R1, and you mash it after that. So, here we go. I'm not that great with uh, this stance, and I should probably equip the weapon too. <laughs> Alright, so, attack, attack, hold, and there you go. And you're basically flinging yourself pretty far forward. So, if we put a waypoint down, we're going to go out to 25 meters. Alright. Oh, that didn't work out so well. There you go. So we cleared about 20 meters with a single combo. It's nothing really to sneeze at. The other combo won't get you quite as far, but if you do prefer Shimmering Blight, that's really gonna, you know, it's really not going to hold you back any, at least not any more than Assimilate already is, you know, going to hold you back. 
So the next one that we, I'm just going to kind of talk about it, and that is uh, heavy blades like the Galatine or the Sindo. And with that, you have two different stances that are really going to keep you mobile. Uh, the most mobile is probably going to be Cleaving Whirlwind. And the reason for that is because it's got two different combos. And so if you wind up hitting the wrong button combination, you're still likely to be moving forward. Now, uh, let's see, the combo, Broken Bull and Sundering Tusk are both mobile. Now, Broken Bull is going to keep you going, and if you have a Rage, or I'm sorry, a Berserker mod, and if you have a mod that's going to uh, help with speed other than that, like a Prime Fury or Quickening, those are really going to keep you moving, and uh, then you could further supplement it with uh, other things like Arcane Strike. So we are actually going to take a look at a different weapon now. Let's see, where is it? Here we go. Mechana Prime. All right, so with the Nakana Prime, this one's got a pretty cool feature. I'm actually going to show you the Tonkor really quick. So while you're in this, you can't jump, you can't roll, you can't do anything. But let's say you're on uh, Europa or Neptune or you got one of those ice planets and you hit one of those pesky little ridges that keep you from going forward. Well, you can just kind of pop yourself over it with the Tonkor. And the Tonkor itself, well, I mean, this weapon makes sorties cry. So you really don't have to worry that much about its scaling and you don't have to worry about the reload or the fact that it's only got two rounds because you're freaking invincible okay so don't even worry about that so from there we are going to test out the stance blind justice now we are going to do a combo called Guiding Light, and it's just attack, attack, hold, and then dash. And there we go, from 25 to 11. That's a pretty good, you know, it's a pretty good uh, amount of space to clear. So we're going back to 25 at this point. We're going to, it's attack, attack, and then wait for a second, and then attack. And I messed it up. Hope you're better at melee than I am. <laughs> well, you do get the point. So it's attack, attack, and then there you go. It's basically like its own little built-in slash dash. It's actually pretty handy. So long as you can get down the uh, button combos. Now, another weapon, also melee, the Akin Brunt. This thing is great. It synergizes so well with... And didn't mean to do that. This thing synergizes very well with Assimilate, and for a couple different reasons. So we have Assimilate going, and when you're blocking with this, uh, Electromagnetic Shielding, as you probably already know, is going to allow you to absorb half of the damage that your allies are taking while they are within range. Now that's a pretty cool feature considering you are taking zero of the damage that you absorb from them. But in addition to that, it's also a very mobile stance. I mean, if, if I just do the first two shots, instead of drawing it into a combo, you can do this, you know? You could just fling yourself forward. And it's a crit weapon, so it will scale very well with uh, uh, body count and blood rush or, and all of that good stuff. Um, so really, it's just a, it's a good weapon to have. Now, the only weapon that I would actually recommend beyond that is going to be everybody's most hated weapon. They love to hate this weapon, the Twin Basilk. Okay, and it is because of this little mod right here, Rift Strike. Now, when I first saw Rift Strike, I completely misunderstood the nature of the effect that it has. I was like, charge attacks, now step through the rift to attack enemies up to 25 meters away. I'm like, hell yeah! Limbo has a melee weapon that attacks people through the rift. <laughs> and uh, when I was asking the uh, forums why it wasn't working, I was like, well I guess I just thought of a way cooler effect that uh, it has. 
or something to that effect. I was like, I guess I must have thought up an effect that's like ten times more badass than what they actually came up with. Anyway, long story short, um, it, it works out pretty well. So we're going to summon just some corpus techs. We're not really trying to uh, get... I don't know. We're not trying to deal with any fancy enemies. We're just uh, experimenting. And what's great about the Twin Basil, beyond the fact that it teleports, is how how status heavy it is. It does status right. A lot of people don't like status, a lot of people I respect hate status. But I feel a little more positive about it. I mean, not only can you move around fast as lightning with this, not only is it a very fast stance when you get the uh, Swirling Tiger stuff going, not only does it send out a wave of, uh, of fire status, but it also uh, is really easy to mod for stuff like Blast. And when you are doing that, when you're modding for stuff like Blast, you're able to efficiently and effectively um, knock down large groups of enemies. <clears throat> and look at all of the uh, critical you know, status damage that they're taking. So now, I'm invincible and I am turning invisible because I'm using um, because I'm using Naramon. And at this point, there's really not much better than that. There's not much better than being completely invincible and completely <laughs> invisible when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to this game. You're effectively unable to be targeted, uh, and so it's a really good melee combo for the late game. It scales well with all of the enemies, um, except for when you are running out of energy, obviously. Uh, once you've taken so much, it just kind of becomes a little more difficult to keep up with it. But, again, body count and blood rush. Well, that's pretty much it for today. And uh, if you happen to like what you saw and you want to see more, by all means, uh, subscribe. Like and share if uh, you think that other people will benefit from this video. And you can find me on Twitter as well, at Fenrushak, F-E-N-R-U-S-H-A-K, at Fenrushak. You can find me on PSN in the same way. And I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, stay safe, Tenno.